all of us have times when things just don't go according to our will. We want to do something, we plan to do something, and it just doesn't work out. So, right now I'm supposed to go from here to New Zealand, but the New Zealand visa is not getting processed. So I applied about more than 40 days ago, but they're saying it'll take 71 days. So I'll be in America by the time I get the visa to New Zealand. So when we make a plan and it doesn't work, it's annoying. But I was thinking about it, that it's just that I want to visit New Zealand for a few days. And just when that plan is not working out, I'm getting annoyed with it. But it's one visit not working out. But imagine if you're staying somewhere and suddenly you're kicked out of that place. And it's, it sometimes happens, you know, we are staying in a house and we are evicted, uh, we get a, if we are a tenant in that house and the landlord says you have to leave this house. At least they give some time, maybe one, one month or something like that. Some decent amount of time is there. But if suddenly we are told you have to get out of this house, oh, even getting out of a house, we may have some friends also at whose place we can go, some relatives we can go. Still, it will be so agitating for us. Hmm. What to speak of if somebody is told to get out of a country itself? Sometime nowadays, it's happening in America. I was at a devotee's house, or I was supposed to go to a devotee's house. For, uh, I was going to stay at their place. And then, uh, I was traveling from one city to another. When I was going to go to that city, I was going to stay at their place. And about five, six days before, that devotee called me and said, I'm sorry, I can't host you. I said, that's okay, but what is the matter? He said, we ourselves don't have a home now. What do you mean? He said, he was applying for the H-1B visa and that extension didn't happen. So, he was planning to host me and organize my program, but before my programs, he had to leave the country. So, there's so much insecurity and, you know, he had his whole life over there. He had his job, his family, his children getting education. He suddenly had to leave. But even when he had to leave, yeah, he was Indian staying in America, he could go to India. He had his parents, his larger family, he had his property in India. But imagine if somebody is evicted from a country and it's like, say we are immigrants, many of us are immigrants in a particular country. And then if you have to go back, we have our home country to go to. But if somebody is evicted from their home country itself and they cannot go to any other country. They just have to go somewhere in a forest and live. Sometimes there are some adventure stories about how somebody is stranded on an island and then they try to learn to survive on that island. You know, that is, uh, it all sounds very good in adventure. But just the situation that suddenly at one moment, uh, you have to just leave your home and go. And generally, when we have to accept something unfavorable or something unpleasant, the magnitude of how unpleasant it is depends on how pleasant our present situation is. Like if we are having a job that is bad and we are fired from that job, if you don't feel that, if you don't feel that bad, it's good riddance. But Ram was the king of, you know, the member of the royal family is going to become the king. So he had everything right. It was not just that he had a house and a job. He, he had a kingdom. And suddenly, tuck, one moment, he had to just leave everything and go to the forest to exile where he had nothing. So just trying to process something like this, we all need to process change in life. Mm -hmm. Say all of you are sitting and hearing. And for you to sit and hear, a certain amount of stability and structure is required. Now, all of you have reasonable confidence that while you are sitting, the person sitting again next to you is not suddenly going to punch you on the nose. <laughs> so, you know, if you do, didn't know who was sitting next to you, or if you, if you didn't have that much level of trust in the person sitting next to you, 
then maybe you are you will be looking half at the speaker look at half at the person <laughs> so we all do need to process change in life but there is a certain amount of structure and stability that is required for us to function and the less the structure and stability the more difficult it becomes for us to function mm -hmm. so as i said if we are afraid that some person next to us might hit us then we would function but our most of our functioning would be focused on guarding ourselves we don't be able to do anything else so generally when change comes up change consumes our attention because we have to deal with it or even if change is not coming up change is likely to come up then also we have to deal with it and that consumes our attention and the more unexpected or the more massive the change the more difficult it is to accept it so now it's very difficult actually apart from sudden death this so very little that can be a change like this at one moment a member of the ruling family and at the next moment just out into the forest with nothing in fact later on when bharat is back and bharat hears that ram has been exiled to the forest shocked he said that ram cannot even conceive doing anything wrong and exile is a punishment reserved for the worst of criminals it is only one level below execution the worst crime is punished with capital punishment but just one level below is exile it means everything except your life is taken away from you so how does one process something like this oh, there are times when things change against our will and our capacity to deal with that situation that determines whether we will be able to move forward in it or not some people just can't deal with it so when ram had to go through the sudden change one moment royal prince a next moment a destitute exile that's a huge change and when such change happens <clears throat> most of our energy goes in just processing in the sense that how can this happen we just can't accept it so the first point i am discussing is that the greater the magnitude and the unexpectedness of the change the more difficult it is to accept it the more unexpected and the more massive then it's that much more difficult to accept it say if a student goes for an exam it's a maths exam and the paper is more difficult than they expected it's a little, little it's okay how to deal with this but they go for a maths exam and they get a english paper hey what is this <laughs> this is not fair <laughs> so when we go for a particular exam we have a certain expectation this is what this should be come in the exam but something else entirely comes if it's a little more difficult paper the student can take it okay it's my bad luck it's one thing to say something is bad luck but if a completely different paper only comes well this is unfair this is not right this should not be happening so what happens life tests us in any subject at any time so it is life tests us in any subject at any time and that's why it's it can be extremely difficult and now at such times acceptance is vital now we may say okay but i don't want to do this okay somebody may say like somebody is the visa extension doesn't get sanctioned they just have to leave the country say i won't leave the country well unless you want to become a undocumented immigrant uh, you have to leave the country so 
of course undocumented immigrant is the american politically correct word <laughs> undocumented worker for a person who is staying illegally so anyway if one doesn't want to do that then one has to accept and even if somebody decides i want to stay in the country illegally still they will have to accept that now i have to do a lot of covert activities i have to conceal my so many things so that i can continue so basically when the world around us changes acceptance is vital say if we are not able to accept then we keep wasting our energy futilely i suppose somebody wanted to learn rowing and they went and took some rowing lessons and they learned rowing and then they call all their friends when somebody learns some new skills they want to exhibit their skills to their friends and they call all their friends and relatives see how nicely i am rowing and they have their whole uh, dream in their mind you know, i'll row gracefully and the boat will move swiftly and people will click my photos people will click the video then they'll share it on social media and everybody will praise me and then they get into that boat and they start rowing and suddenly out of nowhere a monster wave comes the monster wave hits it hits so suddenly and so forcefully at the next moment there is no boat and there are no oars they have been knocked out of the boat and the oars have also been knocked out of their hands now if at that time they still oh i want my photo to be clicked <laughs> and they keep rowing well if they keep rowing what will happen <laughs> what do you think will happen they'll drown they want to keep rowing but there is no boat and there are no oars so at that time they to accept okay this this things are change so now i have to paddle i have to swim and i have to somehow get to the coast first and later on i may have to do this again so with respect to a physical physically threatening situation like this it's easy to understand that we need to do course correction yeah hey, what what are you rowing now get out first nobody would be so stupid as to keep rowing over there but when it comes not so much to physically threatening situations but to emotionally threatening situations then we often find it much more difficult to accept so sometimes things have changed so much and metaphorically speaking we are keeping rowing we are rowing well there is no boat there are no oars why are you rowing so imagine that say somebody is giving a class and you know, somehow say if i come and give a class and i speak in a language that nobody understands over here so now so once it happened to me that um, i had gone for a i had gone for a program and um, they told me you have to speak in english i prepared a whole class in english when i reached there they the organizing that called us they just wanted because iskon was a big name they wanted somebody from iskon to come and there nobody could understand english at all so i had suspected something because when i had got the brochure the brochure was filled with english typos <laughs> there were many typing mistakes so i thought you know they have a english program but the brochure is not written properly but i thought okay hey you know maybe uh Mm. in in, um, in india mm, grammar is often treated with a chalta hai attitude <laughs> <laughs> so i thought maybe it's okay but then when i got there i had prepared a whole class or uh, it was actually interfaith meeting i had prepared the whole class and when i got there it was it was something which there many of the concepts were such that i couldn't even speak them in hindi this one i remember one sentence that i tried to speak and there after i spoke that in hindi so i was thinking in english and speaking in hindi so i wanted to make the point that 
when some religions become aggressive against other religions. <coughs> so outer aggression is a distorted expression of inner insecurity. <laughs> so I spoke that in Hindi. Bahaya akramakta ye antarang asrakshitta ka ek vikrut prakati karan hai. <laughs> they are, I see all blank faces. <laughs> then I realize you know, I have to change tag. I cannot speak all this. So for I think so I had I had a 10 minute presentation. For so for three for at least three, four minutes, it's like I was rowing. There was no boat and there were no boats. <laughs> <laughs> then I realized I have to change track. <laughs> now I have to swim. <laughs> so for all of us, when we are put in situations that we can't accept, or that we didn't expect, first of all, and then unless we accept that, we can't deal with the situation effectively. Whatever we do simply makes things worse. So lack of acceptance prevents us from acting effectively. Rather, lack of acceptance pushes us to act unproductively, counterproductively. Unproductivity is no good effect. Counterproductive is bad effect, actually. If you keep rowing, not only they're not going to exhibit the skills, they're going to drown. So what happens is that we all need to learn this very vital art of acceptance. So it is only when we accept that we can deal with the things as they are. So this was the first point I was going to make. So Lord Ram, is how, he, how he was able to accept. We'll discuss this briefly now. But the point that there's such a huge magnitude of change, he suddenly had to accept. And it, was, it is remarkable that he was able to accept it. 